let's see if we could do a real quick scene here using some of the techniques that we've been developing over the past you know, couple months or so. This is nature set number two, and I'm going to do something with this waterfall right here. Maybe some of the rocks as well. But we're going to be doing this on gold foil. I was just looking to see if I had some uh, pre-trimmed um, silver foil, and I didn't in the quarter size, and I just wanted to do something really fast here, so. Um, so let's just go with the gold. I just did something with that recently using the, uh, the rhinestones, and I really liked that look, so I thought we would follow it up here with another, I think I have some black ink on my, on my scissor here for some reason, I don't know why. I'll just wipe it right off, this is probably some um, black pigment ink. Um, from something I was doing recently. Pigment inks are oil-based inks, okay? And the types that will dry, or the type that will dry on a foil surface like that, from what I found, is brilliant ink, okay? Now you can also use solvent inks too, okay? Those are different types and those can dry uh, instantly, but if you want to kind of play around a little bit with uh, the inks and spread them around a little bit like I'll do in this one, you want to go with something that's um, not going to dry quite as fast as a solvent ink. You could use them in combination potentially, I haven't really done that before, but maybe you use the, uh, the solvent inks for the impression and you can use the brilliant inks to um, kind of tone in the image a little bit. It's all up to you. But those two inks are the types of inks that you would use. I guess the Brilliance is a line of inks, or the uh, solvent inks are a type. Okay, so let's go with... Um, I'm looking for a clean cotton ball. I have my silver on this side. Cotton balls are cheap, but you can use, you know, both sides of them, or whatever sides that you still have, uh, to stamp things, uh, or to tone things out with. Okay, now this is my waterfall scene right here. I have to f kind of figure out if I want to go um, landscape or portrait. If, if you go portrait, this pretty much fills up the uh, you know edge to edge here, kind of. Well, let's go with the uh, let's go with the uh, landscape here. Okay, just in terms of the horizontal uh, format. Okay, so um, this scene. Okay, now here's the thing. When I'm doing this type of technique on foils or on dark cardstock, what I like to do is I like to kind of make an assessment of the imagery, okay? So anything that I stamp this on, the color of the paper is going to show right through. So if I'm stamping it on a piece of dark paper, or if I want those rocks to be light or the water to be light, you have to lay down um, kind of a base coat of white, okay? So I'm looking at this right here, and I'm looking at this just this general area right here, okay? That area right there I want to be um, generally pretty light, or at least kind of oscillating with some light in there, so that uh, the, the rocks will show up as volumes, okay? And then I have all the tones in here with all those little tiny stippled dots um, toned out in black. So that will provide the shadows down here. Then we'll have some rocks over here, but see these two falls right here? I want this area right here to be kind of light so that it's reflecting and kind of shimmering in the, uh, in the uh, I don't know, kind of the mist that's been churning up from the running water, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. It's going to be roughly, it's like a upside down snowman or something like that with a couple areas of um, uh, white pigment ink here, the white brilliance, okay? All right, so um, just in general, okay? I mean, you could try to get this pretty smooth, but I'm not necessarily going for that. I, I, I probably did when I was first playing around with this technique. Um, just because I didn't know what to expect at all. Um, but now, I, I don't know, I find that 
you know, no matter what that kind of looks like, by the time you stamp the imagery over the top of it, it, it matters, but it doesn't matter that much. Okay, not as much as you might think. Okay, so that was my kind of waterfall area and, uh, you know, some rocks out to the side here. Now, let's put a little bit more um, light or white in this kind of a falling water area. I don't know if I'm going to get it registered exactly right there, you know, in that falling water. If it doesn't, like I said, it, it doesn't really matter too much, okay? Now, I don't want to, you know, tone over here, and I, then I end up stamping my waterfall down in the lower, you know, the lower corner, like the opposite corner, you know, so I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all, but you just, you know, vicinity, you know, you want to get it in the vicinity is all, okay. All right, now, um, just to get a little bit of texture down here in this water area, we'll add a little bit more tone just to vary it a little bit. Foils are very, um, they're visually loud, okay? I mean, just this shiny bit, I mean, this is, you know, that's a, that's a loud surface, potentially, um, especially when it's reflecting that light back at you. So kind of, I don't know, just kind of, uh, toning the surface a little bit. Okay, now this is going to be the water area down here. Let me see if I can do something with that to make it a little bit more maybe water-like, okay? So that was my cotton ball. Here's just a paper towel like this. And let's come in here and let's put a few little streaks in here, okay? Let's see if you can see this on the camera. You know, they, these foil videos have a lot of uh, reflections in them, so... Okay, so water has those kind of horizontal striations, right? But down here, it's kind of, you know, it's churning the water, and it's kind of uh, creating a little bit of a um, kind of frothy mist, or so, like so. All right, so you see this kind of streaky surface like that. Yeah, it's a little bit reminiscent of uh, water. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker from the edge here, so I have this kind of shimmering water down here. I mean, you can come back in, too, and, you know, you can add in some additional tone over the top of it like this. You can just kind of keep working it a little bit. I mean, I have a kind of a rough idea in mind, but, you know, <laughs> it just kind of changes, uh, you know, with... Uh, I don't know, the, the process. You know, I might stamp the imagery out, then I think, oh, I need a little bit more. That, so, I mean, you can go back over the imagery, but you want to get most of this kind of light creation um, kind of established right here, because when you stamp your image over it, and I'll do it in the black uh, brilliance ink, that black brilliance ink is going to stay wet for a little bit of time, so... Um, going back and toning over that black with white, you could just be smearing the black, so that's why you like to get it a little bit uh, established, or very established, I should say. Now see, I, I touched that little area right there, and that white just came right off on my finger, so don't worry about that. I mean, you're, that's going to be happening in this type of technique, in this process here. It's just inevitable unless you're super conscientious of it you know in which you can be I, I would say I'm fairly conscientious of it I wouldn't say I'm super conscientious of it because I'm constantly touching my my uh, paper and it you know I'm removing ink whatever you know I have ink all on my fingers but I don't know. Isn't that the fun of it all? Okay, let's see here. Inking up. First time use here of this image. Not of all time, but just, I don't know. I haven't, I probably haven't used it in a while. Okay, so just in general, aiming it in the 
area. I generally want it. You know, maybe I should have heat set that white a little bit. I don't know if that would have helped. It really doesn't dry very fast, even with the heat setting. That's why with this um, type of process, I re usually recommend allowing it to um, kind of air dry for a while. You know, then you can kind of heat set it rather than just kind of heat setting right from the get-go, because otherwise you're, you know, you're going to have that um, um, heat gun on it for a really long time. And um, you know, the potential for this foil to really curl, it could kind of change colors as well, you know, because it is foil. Um, I don't know. I think it's just best to let, let it um, air dry for a time. Okay, so that is that. Uh, let me just leave that on that for a while. I'll have to clean my stamps later. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so anyways, do you see that waterfall right there? Okay, it can use a little bit more white down here, I, I, I think. But let's go for some additional rocks. Okay. These are some of my first images from a stamp in the hand company. It's always interesting to run into some people that uh, have been stamping that long that they would know these images um, from back in the day. I mean, you might know it because I, you know, have them in the stampscapes line now. But um, oops, I <laughs> see. I just touched right there, and I totally. Uh, a big fingerprint there of ink removal. Okay, going with some rocks right in here. The, the stamps, you know, stamp pretty, pretty nicely on this foil. And I'd have to say, okay, let's go for some additional rocks here in the foreground. Uh, they stamp really well. The issue is just drying time. So, you know, this, this, you know, this process right here, I mean, it is so fun to stamp on this foil. It's such a dynamic surface. Uh, just don't stamp something out where you need the card. Uh, you know, you got to mail that card out immediately. Um, I wouldn't do that. Uh, some people have mentioned, um, will spray sealing help? I haven't done that yet. But it's one of those things where if you're doing that, you really have to use good technique when spraying. You spray very lightly. Otherwise, if you hit it with too thick of coat, it'll take a few seconds for that to dry. And in the meantime, it could put your imagery back into solution, the uh, impressions, because this is oil, right? And if you hit it with solvent, you know, solvent is going to make some kind of oil-based um, type of media run, potentially. So... You have to be uh, pretty careful about that. So hit it with a light coat and allow it to dry. Hit it with such a light coat that it almost dries instantly as soon as it touches. You allow that to dry a little bit, spray it again very lightly. It puts another coat, another coat, another coat. A very fast drying coats um, that don't give uh, your pieces such an opportunity to run. Okay, So uh, just be wary about that. Uh, or be mindful about that, okay? All right, so let's go in here with some additional ink. Okay, now let me go ahead and heat set this a little bit. I'm going to come back in here with, and do some fine-tuning with some additional white. See that paper is starting to curl a little bit. You can heat set from the opposite side too, you know. Um, oops. But I mean, that might have set it a little bit, okay? All right, now let's hit this with some additional white here. Okay. I'm going in with a fairly thick application of ink, because if it's really wet on here and drier on here, then the wet will transfer to dry. If it's kind of dry on here and wet on here, that will transfer onto the 
you know, the, uh, the cotton ball here. So I'm going to as wet as I can. And cotton's, you know, it's a pretty soft medium or applicator material, whatever. So that will apply on there. Pretty good. It's not really uh, picking up that uh, black as far as I can tell, so that's a good, pretty good sign. I didn't think it would heat set enough on those, on the black impression, but not too bad. Okay, so I'm just adding on this additional mist down here now that I know exactly where my falls are going to go, okay? Maybe follow this up a little bit more. Just kind of like fine-tuning. Okay, so I'm very pleased. I don't know, I don't see any black on there at all. I don't know, maybe, maybe the heat setting worked a little? Oh, okay. I think it's the wet on dryer. You know, not dry, but drier. I just touched right there and it came off on my finger, so. You know, so. It's not completely dry, but it's it's dry enough where I can apply this at least. Okay, going up the falls. I don't know, I'm just kind of. I really like to leave, um, or to create the, uh, the falling water portion to be very light. Um, I think that creates a visual... Okay, now I am starting to smear it. <laughs> I'm getting some of that black on here. Maybe I need to, you know, I need to apply more white paint on this. So it's not just kind of picking up that black as much. Alright, All right, so we have that falling water like that. I'm going to try something here with the shimmering image, okay? Let me just use this top portion of it, but let's stamp this in white. And let's, I don't know, let's see if it works. We'll get some of those additional striations here potentially. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. I'm always looking for opportunities for additional texture. Okay, I'm wiping off this a little bit. And we'll come over here. Okay. So you see that down here? That. I don't want that standing out that much, okay? So let's put another one up here, but in a lighter. Texture, I guess. A lighter impression. Okay, so now we've added our highlights or lit areas. I wouldn't really call them highlights. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now let's go back in and add our shadows. Now this is this is where the brilliance in, comes into play. Otherwise, you can just do everything and um, stays on. I mean, you know, it might be a good idea just to stamp out the, Im you know, the uh, images and like a stays on and just have it dry. Then you won't even have to worry about it. But if you want to do some additional tones in here, that's where the brilliance comes into play. Okay. All right. So I'm going to add, I'm flipping this up because I can access these areas a little bit easier. I'm going to access my shadow areas in my rocks. Okay. So I'm going to give my rocks a little bit of more visual weight by adding some tone at the base of them, okay? Like so. And I also like to add a little bit of a, you hear me say it all the time in my videos, the vignette around the side, which will kind of, it, it just frames the scene off and gives things a little bit more focus. It's like kind of creating a stage for your scene, okay? It's a world unto itself. It's a self-contained world, you might say. 
okay? rather than kind of the fragment of a larger overall. It's everything that it needs to be um, in a scene. And that's what my uh, art professors always used to, well, one of them used to mention, he saw it as like a stage, you know, rather than a part of a greater whole, which is missing part. Everything is just as it should be. Okay, so here's my kind of frame. You can see how I'm kind of going into those rocks a little bit like that, but I'm leaving the top sides of the rocks a little bit more light. Okay, so here's one side of it, and we'll do the same thing over here. See over here, there, it's just kind of wide open. I mean, I can add some trees or something like that behind there. I, and in fact, we will add some additional um, imagery in here, but um, let's do this first. Let's kind of give volume and mass to uh, objects. Okay, so see this down here in the shadows like that, where I've added a lot of tone. I'm going to reiterate that with some additional tone, okay? So you can just look at the imagery and where it's dark, then you add a little bit more dark. You know, you tone in a little bit more in those areas. Okay. So I've had those rocks up here and I have them down here. So they're kind of like in the background and in the foreground. So you can do that with your imagery. Everything's designed to be used or to be utilized as um, in as many ways as possible when I design these stamps. Um, it's easy to design something where it's kind of a, a one-dimensional type of thing where you can use things like one way, but ideally you want to be able to utilize your stamps like three or four different ways. And Scenic stamping is just a perfect opportunity for that because some things can be used as backgrounds, as foregrounds. Oftentimes I use a cloud <laughs> at the base of my waterfall, so I'm not going to do it in this one. But uh, yeah, you know, so a cloud can be something in the foreground at the base of the waterfalls in that frothy mist, or it could be something, you know. six miles away in the sky or whatever. All right, so just kind of fleshing things out. It's looking a little bit more dramatic with the addition of the uh, black ink, don't you think? Isn't that how everything's a little bit more contained now? Doesn't it look like that, you know, that illumination is, it just, it's just different, see over here? where I've kind of toned around here, but I've come into these areas like this. And I just kind of left it kind of real universal, but, um, you know, with a round type of thing. But I'm taking into consideration the objects that are down here. So in here, here's, this, <laughs> here's that row of rocks right there. So I've toned in at the base of it there. And over here, I'm kind of leaving things a little bit more streaky, okay? You know, there's these striations in the water, and I'm kind of just going along in that same spirit. We did it with the white, and now we're just doing it with the black, okay? So you kind of stay with that same kind of spirit in both shade and light. So you don't have to reinvent things. You just kind of stay with the same technique, but you're just kind of playing them against each other, okay? Um, there's streaks in the water with light, Streaks in the water with black. Okay. That is that. Now let's add in some foreground reeds. We can do some trees like this, you know. Um, <laughs> tempted. It, let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's go fairly bold with this one. In my mind, I'm thinking, eh, okay, let's heat set again. Let's just kind of, I don't know if it's being on the safe side, but it's safer side. I don't know if it's going to, you know, like a big solid image is going to stamp out real well over the top of kind of wet ink. Yeah, 
that dried pretty good, I'd say. It's really curling, though, on me. I need to counterbend it. I don't want to counterbend too much, though. I think I... I don't know. I'm trying to expedite things. I wouldn't have had that heat gun so close, but... Oh, let's counterbend right here a little bit. Or a lot. Okay. That's pretty flat there. Okay, so let's go back. Let me re-ink this. Alright, I'm not going to use the whole tree. I'm not sure how much I'll use, but... Let's go about right here. Careful when you're stamping kind of a, a big object with a lot of thick ink on it. Oil-based ink, so it's super slippery ink. You know, that. And then you're stamping it potentially into wet ink on here, so... And it's a super smooth surface, like stamping on glass, practically. Um, you don't want to stamp it down and have it slide on you and have a real blurry image. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And, you know, there was some kind of thicker wet blacking down here, but because I'm stamping black into black, it doesn't really matter. If it doesn't stamp out really, you know, well down here, then it, you know, it's black anyway, so who cares? All right. Now, on this tip right here, I am going into that waterfall, but, you know, they should play against each other, um, kind of light against dark. Dark against light. When you stamp something like that right over the light, it makes the light seem lighter, and it makes the uh, impression here seem that much darker because there's so much contrast there. Whenever I have like a moon in the sky, a lot of times I like to have like birds kind of flying across it. It's for the birds, yeah, but it's mostly for the contrast. It just makes the moon or whatever that object in the sky seem that much lighter. It might even create more drama by having something, by covering it some, you know, somewhat. But you're covering it by, um, you know, something that's providing contrast. All right, I don't see my rocks in the foreground very much. You see them a little bit, but, you know, like I said, I didn't know that I was going to stamp my trees down there, you know, before, so, you know, the rocks are down there. But look at that now. Isn't that kind of dramatic? It's like the hidden little pool um, magic pool, golden, I don't know, golden falls, <laughs> whatever. Okay. Now you have to be careful about those trees down there. Oops. All right. White pen. Um, let's see. I have a silver pen here. Or gold? No. Gold. Where's my gold pen? Gold pen. Um, Meowzen. Or, you know, um, Artistro. Use whatever one. This is the Artistro, Artistro white pink pen. I'm fairly sure it's all of that stuff is coming out of the same factory. I keep saying that to everyone. I'm going to stop saying that. Eh, only because I, I mention it every time, but the barrel and everything like that, the case, the plastic here, the molding is all the same, so I'm just guessing all these are made in the same area. And I, I see them as really high quality, you know. They, they don't clog on me or whatnot, so I think going with really whatever one is fine, what brand-wise. Okay, so... Adding some additional little flourishes down here with my white paint pen. Okay, it's like adding some little splashes. Um, some Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White would be interesting down here. I wouldn't want it in front of... Where am I getting all this black ink here? There must be some on my pad somewhere. Um, was I saying? Anyway. Um, okay, so adding some... Oh, Dr. Martens, I was going to say, you can, uh, you, you know, splash some little um, splashes down there. I, I wouldn't want it in front of the trees, though, um, you know, because the splashes are kind of in the background. Okay. And get 
some illuminate some of my water in the background like so. I'm tempted to add a, on some highlights onto some of these rocks. Maybe I will here in a couple of different areas. But I think I, I want most of the attention on the kind of the water, the sparkling water aspect. So I'll leave I'll put most of these little highlights on the water and not on the rocks, okay. Let's go down here a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now you see all these little striations down here um, that I stamped in with the uh, shimmering stamp in white. I can just go and reiterate. I can go on them and kind of add a stronger you know, little dot configuration. You don't have to do a whole lot. I mean, you can add as many as you want. I know some would say that you know, the amount that I've added right there, you know, is going kind of crazy with it. I, mean, I don't think it's too much. Um. Okay, this is gold here. All right. So, I mean, we've added that in white. Why not go in here and add a few little touches in gold? kind of see some little dots down here. Those little dots that are dark against white. Yeah, they're not real glittery. I didn't shake this up a lot. I don't want to sit here and shake it up, you know, just for a uh, you know, minute and a half. I could turn off the video, but let's just keep running with this right here. Um, all right, so let, let me add opportunities for crystals, okay? This is what I've been thinking about um, in terms of a you know potential composition an opportunity for um, crystals waterfalls at the base of a waterfall okay I'm kind of adding this glue out and kind of a little bit of a line it's super thick and I don't know. I'm going. I'm going to add. I'm going to go along with these little kind of striations here in the water. In terms of some gem applications, okay. I was going with dots, you know, but I think that that those lines like that of um, gems for water look really good. Okay, maybe I'll even have some in my waterfall. I'll go down like this. A few opportunities in here. This um, glue is so thick it kind of drives me nuts sometimes when I'm putting a dot down I'm pulling it off and it's pulling this long string of glue that just doesn't break. But I guess I could take advantage of it too sometimes by just um, utilizing that, I don't know, that cheese, melted cheese type of aspect of it, you know, to make, you know, a line like that. Okay, so I'm cleaning off my little gem picker here a little bit. I think it had too many of the oils of my finger on it, and it wasn't picking up as well. It's the first time I've kind of cleaned it off. All right, let's start off with some crystals right here, some clear crystals. Let's start off with some really small ones. Okay, this is picking up perfect. I just needed to just kind of wipe it off. All right. All right. Let me see if you can see this at all. So I'm using the Tech Unite ones right here. Okay, I'm going to have that little bit off screen so you can see where I'm utilizing it. And there's a little line of glue here, here, and here, and here. You know. I don't know. Here, I'll do this upright so you can kind of see, too. Where am I getting all this ink from? I have this ink somewhere. Did I just touch that? It's the mystery ink. Is it on this? I had some ink right here. Huh. It's probably... 
It's probably somewhere on my desk. Okay, so anyways, back to this. Oops. Now these crystals are not um, the hot fix ones, so they, as far as I know, they don't have that ad adhesive. Um, if you um, apply heat to them, okay. The other ones that I'll use, the gold, do have that uh, um, property to them, so those ones you don't you know if you kind of apply heat to it um, it'll stick so that, that'd be a good way to go um, probably I I was thinking I don't want to get that I just wanted to use this glue like this but uh, when I was doing a scene I don't know when it was yesterday or the day before I thought yeah I don't know that that uh, hot fix applicator tool might not be a bad idea it's this little tool that has a hot tip like that you plug it in and you just kind of press it on that gem and it melts that um i am i don't know where this ink is coming from there might i might be uh there might be a like an ink haunting here at my table. Oops, that j that uh, crystal went on upside down. Do I take the time to flip it? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just... It'll be upside down. Kind of having to look at this at an angle to see um, <laughs> where my glue is, okay? Alright, but anyways, there's this little crystal sound there. It's almost kind of applied a little bit too uniformly. Um, just as is, but let's go on with some of the smallest of my little gold ones just to kind of, oh, I don't know, play around with the... Uh, Um, I don't know, spacing, I guess, and configuration. So I'm just kind of interspersing. I'm not kind of grouping, you know, just, um, you know, the clear crystal rhinestones with the, uh, the gold rhinestones. Someone, uh, that really amusing. I know these gold ones that are opaque aren't crystals, but I just, I don't know, just, you know, I figured everyone would kind of figure that out. Uh, but I posted on Facebook, I just said clear and gold crystals, and someone said, oh my god, did someone just say gold crystals, you know, with a laugh, like, you know, how dumb are you? <laughs> Meaning me. And maybe I am, but I don't know. I just didn't feel like saying, you know, I'm using clear crystals and gold rhinestones. My little uh, description blurb. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so anyways, I think that's about right. Okay, so let's look at this. <laughs> maybe that's too crazy right up here. What do you think? <clears throat> or maybe that's just too much. I don't know. It's 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 my waterfalls blinged out, you know. It's not kind of the subtle type of thing <clears throat> maybe. Let's let's kind of balance it out a little bit here. Let's go with some white. I'm 
let's go with some kind of larger white um, highlights. And oops, I'm drawing into some of that uh, glue. Okay, kind of, I'm strengthening my falling water. I'm just kind of putting some dots down here within the lines of the stamp design itself. So I'm just staying with the design. I'm not just kind of making it up, although you could, but you don't have to. That. Okay. Right. All right. These look kind of weird like that, but that's not the killer. Oops. Here's the one where crystal. Let me just use that one. Might as well. I have to find some glue that's still a little wet. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So let's take a look. All right. So that looks kind of weird, but that's not my. Um, Kind of the goal is to not have dark on light like that. And we're looking at it like as if you were looking at a card from five inches from our face, you know, like that far away. But this is really what you're looking at, you know, in terms of the end result, you know, in terms of holding something at arm's distance. And you hear that kind of, you know, that reflective quality right down there in the water. And that's really fun. It's just really, see the, yeah, there we go. See that right there? See how that really changes in that water like that? I'd play around with it, you know. Um, a lot of you have um, things like glitters, glues, and things like that. You can, you know, kind of add around um, in these types of areas. Um, add crystals, whatever, any type of reflective type of material. Okay, I'm going around. This is where you kind of fine-tune your um, kind of perimeter. Because, see, I've been touching this, so I'm removing some ink. So it's just at the tail end, when you don't need to handle your card anymore, you know, you can just let it, allow it to dry. Hit it again with one last kind of perimeter coat of ink. In this case, it's black ink right here. Or, I don't know, if the white got in there a little bit and you want to add a little bit more of that in there, you can do it at this point in time as well. But let's take a look here and see. Now, Crystal Falls. Like that. See that? Is that shimmery, glistening like that? See all these little areas kind of come to life like that when you hold it up. It's like little, I liken it to like little LEDs or something like that, but it's, you don't have to wire up or anything, hook up a, you know, those little batteries and stuff. So it's, it's kind of really where you want it to go. Look at this. When you put it at that angle, you can really see that white ink in there. Just how kind of slathered it is on those fall areas, okay? Back here, you don't really see the, Whiting too much, although it is underneath those um, rocks a little bit. And see that over here, you can see that rock has a little bit of white underneath it, but less over here. So it gives it that kind of dimension. See, if I didn't have that white in there, those rocks wouldn't show up. It would be, you know, as dark as this. So that's where that white little little white kind of shows up, you know, and benefits you from doing that preliminary um, layering down there. So. Anyways, okay, so uh, falls, uh, using nature set number two, with some rocks in there and uh, the spruce tree in the foreground. Use that shimmering down there too. Didn't have to, but um, I thought it kind of added to that overall um, kind of layering and texturing down there. All right, so fun stuff with crystals. I'd, uh, I don't know, recommend uh, getting a pack of these. They're really great for stars and any type where you'd see you know, any kind of um, specular light, you know, shining like, you know, like if it was a pen like this, you, you put a little sparkle on that, 
You see my little nails here. My nails aren't shiny or anything like that, but some of you have your nails done. And, you know, this little highlight like that on a nail would be spacely light. It's a perfect place, spot for a, a crystal. And this one, there's a bunch, bunch of crystals because they're so much fun to use. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.